I am back from vacation and uh, excited that you guys could join me today uh, for Monday Morning Mojo. So we're going to get right into it and uh, I hope that you're ready for a great week. I know I am and uh, I want to talk to you today about how to break through to your um, break through your own ceiling of achievement to bigger results in your life and uh, this content today is, uh, I want to give full disclosure, is coming from some resource material that I have avail available to me at Keller Williams. And it is part of a course that I love to teach called uh, The Six Personal Perspectives. And I believe the course was written by Gary Keller, the founder of the company. And it has nothing to do with real estate. And it has everything to do with um, really mastering yourself and it has to do with getting out of your comfort zone. So how many of you can acknowledge that when we get stuck in our comfort zone, uh, it really holds us back from achieving bigger results? Would you agree? It's just not always easy to step out. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to jump right into it and I'm going to share my screen and give you an opportunity to uh, take some notes if you'd like and help you to look at some areas in your life that you would like to break through. So I trust you can see my screen. Somebody tell me yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Awesome. Good morning, good morning. It's good Monday, morning. new week. It is a, a new month too. And this is um, a diagram that is gonna help us understand this concept of moving from E to P. And basically, what, what we're talking about here, uh, if you look at the bottom of the diagram in the entrepreneurial style, it's really, um, I think, the, the space that we typically work in, right? It is, entrepreneurial is really doing what comes very natural to us. And it is really where we um, find like our natural skill set and ability. And usually it is um, all of the things in our natural style and our entrepreneurial style that we can say has helped us get where we are, or at least get us started where we are. So in other words, if you think about what you're doing as a career, or if you think about your own passion, it comes very natural to you because that's where your drive and enthusiasm comes from, uh, your intuition, your, your natural behaviors. And um, many people uh, probably, it's very aware, people are very aware of it. So it's, it's obvious to others. And you may even hear people um, give you positive feedback about those natural skills, right? And so it may be what actually got you into the line of work that you're doing or why you uh, have joined a certain group, civic group or um, uh, not-for-profit type group, and maybe why you have uh, created opportunities there for your own leadership or, or volunteerism. And so those natural abilities, they get us noticed and they help us move forward. But they only help us move forward so far until, what, until we hit the ceiling of achievement and we realize that what brought us here is not always enough to get us where we want to go. And so um, it's really this E to P model is the difference between doing something and mastering it. So as we work through our natural style and we see how it helps us grow and achieve success, it only takes us so far until we kind of hit our head on the ceiling of achievement. How many of you can uh, relate to this and, and you felt this in, in your experiences or in your career, maybe you're even experiencing now, where you feel like, okay, I can't really go any further. I can't really level up. And so what happens at that point when you hit your ceiling of, of achievement, it can be somewhat discouraging. It can be somewhat painful. And so we um, feel disappointment. We feel frustration. And that means that for most of us, we usually see a drop in production or a drop in performance, right? Because mindset is 90% of, if not 95% of our success in anything that we do. Um, and so for a little bit, we drop off, we get discouraged, uh, we get frustrated, and we don't work at the same level. 
And we might even fall into a plateau, what they call resignation, like you just accept what's happening and say, well, I must be doing the best I can. This is my skill set. This is my level of performance. Um, yet there's, there's something to be said about entrepreneurs especially, and those of us who um, really use our natural abilities uh, at a high level, we find at some point we're going to bring ourselves out of it. We're going to pull ourselves up out of this, right? We grab ourselves by the bootstraps and say, no, I can do this. And so we see, as you can look at the diagram here, that we start to come back up again in production until we hit the ceiling again. And so what I wanna make sure everyone knows is that this is a pattern that will repeat itself, right? So your natural abilities can only take you so far until you hit that ceiling of achievement where you kind of level off. And then because you get frustrated, you might even find production decreases, results don't start to, you don't start to see those same results. Uh, but you can pull yourself out of it. You can bring yourself back up to a level uh, until you hit the ceiling again. So to avoid this kind of frustration and, and yo-yo pattern of performance, it's really about recognizing what it takes to break through. And this breakthrough is not gonna happen naturally on its own. This is not a time on task method. This takes, um, if, if you look at the diagram, I always think of like a stick of dynamite blowing through a wall. And, and that's what it takes. Um, and so this is really an important conversation to have because if you don't break through these ceilings of achievement, will you ever really master your own potential? Will you ever really know how far you can go with your ability? And so um, it's also important because if you only stay in your comfort zone, which is here, right, doing what comes natural to you, Will you experience true growth? Will you be able to see again how to master certain things to achieve results on a bigger level? Will you really be able to develop the skills and develop the, the perspectives needed to be able to really expand your talent and expand your potential? Um, so if you never get out of your, your comfort zone, uh, the result is that you want, will not really see your highest potential. So what does it take to create a breakthrough? Well, it creates, excuse me, what does it create to, um, what does it, <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied this morning. What do you need to create a breakthrough? You need to apply a more purposeful style. And really being purposeful, if you're taking notes, write down systems and models. In order to become more purposeful, you need to really start to focus and you need to create strategic options, right? So in other words, if we're doing what comes natural, we're probably not taking the time to sit out and write out a plan. If we're doing what comes natural, we're probably not taking the time to create um, the goal with the action plans, with deadlines and timeframes, and we're not probably doing things like time blocking and, and really getting clear and focused on the activities that we need to, to have uh, in order to get those results. And if we are doing things in a more purposeful style, we are really looking at how do we, um, what uh, a lot of people refer to as sharpening the saw. Right. So are we taking additional training? Are we hiring a personal or, or professional coach? Are we consulting with other people to learn what they've done in their uh, quest for a similar goal? Are we applying, as I mentioned, systems? Are we looking at proven models that we can then incorporate into our own you know, goals or, or um, action plans? And, and this is true for anything. This is not just true for business. It could be about creating a plan around uh, in, in weight loss, it could be about improving your relationships. You know, it's really about getting out of doing what comes natural because that's kind of like winging it. Wouldn't you agree? And when we're winging it, um, it, it really is exhausting, right? Because we don't really have a plan and we don't really have a clear idea of 
where we're headed with that because we're doing just what feels right at any time and it's, we're doing just what comes natural. So this E to P model is about really breaking through so that you can level up and achieve a higher level of success. And it's really about developing mastery. So I just want to talk about mastery for a second. So, uh, and maybe I can encourage some of you who are on Zoom to come off um, and maybe uh, answer this question for me. When you think of the word mastery, what comes to mind? Practicing a long time to get it right. <laughs> Practicing a long time to get it right. That's, that's true, very true. Anyone else have something that comes to mind when they hear the word mastery? Someone who is able to teach it to somebody else. Very good, yeah, for sure. Because they have that level of expertise. Yes. Good. Anything else? So Tracy and Jill are right on the money. Um, mastery is a higher level of performance because the, the individual has put a lot of time into developing that skill to such a high level that we say you've mastered it, right? So I know um, I use this example a lot, um, like martial arts, right? So we know that someone who has a black belt, they've really mastered the, um, the art and, and uh, uh, the whole you know, um, skill set around developing through the levels, right, of martial arts into this level of being a master. And so that's really what this is about, is how can you master something, right? And when you master something, you are, you, you know it so well that you do it at a high level without much effort, and you can teach it to other people. You can, you can certainly be an example or a leader to others. So what areas of your life do you want to master? And I will say that uh, another um, part of this course that we discuss is the idea of self-mastery. Because if you can't master yourself first, can you really master anything else? And so when we say self-mastery and, and the idea of being the master of yourself, it's really about knowing clearly what your strengths and weaknesses are, knowing clearly uh, what areas you want to grow in, being someone who is um, comfortable with accountability, and I'll talk about that in a second. It's really mastering all of your habits so that you're creating positive outcomes. So, and, and really understanding more about who you are and how you operate and how to develop yourself at a higher level. That would be self-mastery. So if you're always focused on that kind of personal growth, does it make it possible then for you to master other areas of knowledge and skill set, whether it be professional or personal? So that is important as well when we look at this E to P model, because it is really essential for us to have the right skill set. But it's, it's more important to have the right habits because that's what supports everything else. And that's what helps us move through from E to P. So as you become more purposeful, uh, you're probably, as I mentioned, incorporating systems that and proven systems and models that will help you do what you need to do more efficiently, help you do it faster. You're, you're applying focus and strategic options. You have a plan that you're working from. You're goal-oriented. You're probably very time-blocked with your calendar. And you're not afraid of accountability. And accountability uh, is really a process that you do with someone else. It is uh, where you can be clear about the goals that you have and the, and the right person is holding you accountable to that. And through a pretty quick conversation, probably on a weekly basis, that person can help you look at where you were going with the results that you have and are you getting closer to your goals or are you not? And if you're not, if you're off track, why and how can we get you back on track? So having the right accountability partner can be a life changer and it is not punitive. It is not something that should, it, it's not something that should be done to make you feel like you're being micromanaged. That has nothing to do with accountability. Accountability is a healthy relationship, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, sometimes it is uncomfortable. So I can't tell you that that won't be a part of the process. Uh, it can be a little bit uncomfortable, 
because honestly, anything that we do at a higher level is uncomfortable, right? If you look back at this diagram, that's the entire premise here of E to P. If we're moving from doing what comes very natural to us, well, this is comfortable. That's the comfort zone. So it, again, if you're looking to achieve bigger results in your life and you're willing to break through, it's going to be a little uncomfortable here at first because this, you're not used to working this way. You're not used to working through these systems and models and having someone hold you accountable. So, but again, that is really the only way you're going to see bigger results. Now, here's another question that uh, maybe someone can uh, talk to me about. Um, what do you think happens as you develop this and become more purposeful? And yes, you're doing what's uh, comes unnatural to you at first, right? What do you think happens after a little bit of time or, or however much time? What do you think starts to, how does this start to feel? Yeah, Uplifting. Oh, go ahead, Jill, I'm sorry. No, I, I would say I would, you would be self-rewarding and feel positive and encouraged by the fact that you can make a change as planned. Absolutely, for sure, for sure, thank you. And Tracy, what were you gonna say? I think that over time, with if you're continuing in this purposeful style, I think this switches from unnatural to natural. Yes. Time. You got it. So that's another thing I want everyone to understand and accept is that this will repeat itself. So as you break through whatever ceiling you're at and you apply this more purposeful style and you start to see how you can achieve success at a higher level, the things that you're doing here start to become natural. You develop you know, a, a sense of mastery around it. So this ceiling shows up again up here, right? So it's always about leveling up. And as you grow in your career, as you grow personally in your relationships or in your own um, you know, understanding of yourself, wherever the growth is happening in your life, realize that at some point you do, you do hit a ceiling again and the things that you did before to get to where you are now may not sustain you. You may have to look at doing different things or learning additional skills. And so um, it means that you might still continue with coaching and training or reading certain books and applying strategy uh, and, and proven models and systems, but those, those systems and models might have to change. They may have to expand. You may need additional tools. You would probably start to read different types of books or uh, talk to a different type of coach because now you're, you've expanded yourself to a higher level. And so you can't rely on the same things that got you here. You have to, you have to be willing to look at what you need at that level to break through and expand again. So this, this is a really important concept to understand about achievement because, you know, like for instance, uh, again, this comes from content that is available to me at Keller Williams. We discuss the fact that in our company, we do have a lot of systems and models. We do have a lot of resources available to our agents and everyone has access to the same tools and resources. Well, we can look at that and I can pan out, you know, as I've done work and continue to do work as a coach with people from other industries and other paths in life, you know, we all have vast knowledge available to us. We all have the ability to ask someone or do some research and find the course, find the coach, find the book, go back to college, whatever the, whatever the journey is, we all have resources available to us. And yet, why is it that some people achieve success at a higher level than others, right? So it is about this perspective and it is about understanding really what it is, your own operating system and what you're doing now. It's understanding and acknowledging, what am I doing that is very natural to me? It's very, it doesn't take a lot of effort and, and it's all good and it's all positive because it got you where you are right now. Yet you have to be willing to ask yourself, is it enough to continue to help me grow to that next level? Probably not. And so what do you need to create this explosive breakthrough? If you can picture this ceiling of achievement like a brick wall, what do you need to run through that 
how do you need to change what you're doing? What do you need to implement and incorporate so that you can become more purposeful in your style and start to achieve results at a much higher level? So we have a couple minutes. I'd love to know if anyone has any thoughts, questions, or ahas about that. And um, if this is something that is appropriate for you. I always find that it, this the information comes when you need it most. So if anyone has something to share, I would love to hear from you. I did put something in the chat box. Oh, okay. You did. You I'm first sorry. Started. Do you okay. know what? Sometimes when I share my screen, I don't see all these other boxes. So let me open that up. Okay. So Jill's question is, what role does the external factors that are out of your control play in the rebound of progression through the phases, through the discipline? Okay. So um, give me a little bit more information. So you're saying when you start to feel like you hit your, your head well, on the ceiling? Well, yeah, no, as an entrepreneur, right, you know that you have what you show here, drive, enthusiasm, intuition, you know, the external things that you can't control sure. is part of the experience that either you're going to maintain your level of enthusiasm, your natural behavior or not, you know? Uh, so if, from your experience, what and how would you frame the external forces that you're going to naturally bump into? Yeah. yeah great question. So um, first of all, we have to acknowledge that there's always going to be an external factor. There's always going to, so we're always working and living within the economy within um, the socioeconomic uh, situations that are around us. So that's never going to change. What will change is the factors themselves, right? The, the particular climate or whatever the uh, effects of that, you know, what recent current events are creating in our lives or in our business. So I guess my, my answer to you would be the first to understand that it's always going to be there. So if it's there, you have to learn how to work through it or around it. So in other words, the current state of the economy may not have, and I, I want to say this in a sensitive way, because I realize right now, especially with COVID and, and the effects of that, there are many businesses that are downsizing or experiencing some really challenging times right now. Yet, is that a call for reinvention? So if, if, the, if a particular business is really not positioned to weather this particular um, time in our lives, does that business need to reinvent itself in a way that it can? And so there's always going to be factors. And we understand, you know, that as people working in our business, we have our own, we bring ourselves into it, right? So we feel those levels of frustration and disappointment, which is why I say mindset is 95% of your success, which a coach can help with a lot of that. Um, and then I would say the value of looking to create a breakthrough quickly is really important because in, in making that breakthrough and finding a more purposeful style, we're incorporating strategy and we're incorporating models and systems. And those models and systems could be what helps you weather the storm. It could be those models and systems and strategic options um, in addition to your mindset that can really help insulate you and your business from the effects of whatever is going on around you, right? So the systems are designed, and, and, and so again, we have to find the, the appropriate systems and models, the proven ones that will help you do whatever it is that you need to accomplish in your business. But those systems and models, if you stick to them, should help you weather the ups and downs in your business. And the problem is sometimes we abandon the systems when life or business is good, and because, we think we don't need it. And then when we find we're in that downturn, suddenly we need to apply the systems or, or something more purposeful. Did that give you the, the sure. answer? Sure. So, so, the, so the redefinition of what success is, it sounds like. So if, yeah. you're, if you're in this time where it's very extreme, and I don't yeah. know any business owner that's not saying that, mm -hmm. um, even those that are in the uptick with the healthcare, the, sure. the, the extremeness of this experience is causing everybody to redefine their measurement of success against their own experiences and it's almost micro steps in terms of how to determine what your successes will be if you haven't had uh, some success in the usual way how do you now say wait a minute i've got to hang on brace myself maybe find as you say a wingman or somebody to help you through being accountable to make it impactful enough to say let's 
take it in a slower fashion and manage the expectations for success, if you can use that term. Sure. And again, I'll just say for some people, it may not be about going fast or slow. It, it may be more about the strategy. And uh, it is. It, it also could be about uh, really taking a hard look at your business model and examining whether it's still relevant today. And that's what I mean by reinvention. So right. some businesses are seeing that it's an opportunity to do things in, in a different way or to do things at a higher level through change, through, through really, you know, reinventing their business model in a way that makes it so they can continue to grow. I, I mean, look, let's face it, none of us have a crystal ball. However, I think we can all accept the fact that what we've seen since March is really creating this trajectory that even though we didn't predict it, we have to be willing to understand it because it's not it's moving us in a very different direction and it's not necessarily, I don't think we're going back to the way things were, right? I hate saying the new normal, but yet we have to be resilient enough to understand that change is always going to happen. It's inevitable. And even when it's very unpredicted or, uh, you know, if it's unpredictable change or drastic change, it, it, the sooner we can understand and embrace it, then we can interpret it to know what is our next move. And, uh, you know, that's true personally as well. Great question, Jill. Oh, thanks. Anyone else have any comments or aha about this conversation this morning? Because this is definitely, moving from me to P is definitely going to get help you get your mojo back if you feel like you're losing it. Is the word on your screen spontaneity the last one or is there something yes. under it? Okay. I wasn't spontaneity, sure. yes. Okay. Well, there yeah. you go. <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. I have all That's these okay. little things from Zoom showing up. So, all right. Well, listen, I appreciate all of you being here and I trust that you do get a lot of value out of our uh, conversations every Monday morning. And if you have any questions or comments about what we're talking about in, in a follow-up that you want to reach out to me, please do so. I appreciate you guys that jump on Zoom. I know there's a lot of you watching on Facebook. And uh, just know I'm always available to, to chat with you or kind of break down this information. And if you find that this has been valuable to you, please share this group with others. It's growing. We have over 400 people on the Facebook group. And uh, it's exciting uh, to know that someone gets what they need when they need it. So please share and invite people to join the group or join us on Monday morning. And I will say that if any of you are uh, looking to uh, talk to someone, a coach, I am a business coach and a life coach. And if I can help you with a conversation around this E2P or anything else in your business, uh, please reach out. I would love to, to chat with you. So have a great week and I will see you back here next Monday. Enjoy. Anna. All right. Take, take care. care, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.